Welcome back on the AM show. You know what time it is right now. I'm about to serve you hot, my blunt thoughts for the morning. My name is Benjamin Akaku. And this morning I've titled it, The Sleaze and Greed Factors of Our Misleaders and Ghana Wept. The Sleaze and Greed Factors of Our Misleaders and Ghana Wept. To start off today's blunt thoughts, I shall take you back to the year 1996. On April the 16th of that year, the legendary Michael Jackson released this song, They Don't Care About Us. Now, pardon my voice, I am not Michael Jackson, but the lyrics are what are important. So I'll walk you through some of them. They Don't Care About Us, that's the title of the song. It sounds something like, and I say like because again, I'm not Michael Jackson. Skinhead, deadhead, everybody gone bad, situation, aggravation, everybody, allegation, in the suite, on the news, everybody, dog food, bang bang, shock dead, everybody's gone mad. All I want to say is that they don't really care about us. Beat me, hate me, you can never break me, will me, thrill me, you can never kill me, jew me, sue me, everybody do me, kick me, kike me, don't you black or white me. All I want to say is that they don't really care about us. They don't care. This is how the misleadership in Ghana makes me feel. Our misleaders don't really care about us. They simply don't. A typical example is corruption. There's this quote which some people attribute to former American President Bill Clinton, which goes like, quote, the true cost of corruption is when what should have been ain't or isn't, if you want to put it in English. Another bit that got me thinking about our misleadership is from a scene I got an explanation to yesterday in Abelinkme. Now, I shared it this morning during our news review and I'll share it again. Usually around the fire service and there is this travel and tourism entity. And nowadays when I use that route, I see people on both ends of the road and queues and all of that. So many people thronging the area. I've been wondering what's going on there? Only to find out yesterday that these people, well, this place has some connections to a certain foreign country, Canada to be specific, and that a lot of people are thronging the place because guess what? They just want to ship out of Ghana. Get out of here. Can you blame them? Look at our latest hotline documentary, A Nation That Begs. We've given you the genesis. Now we're about to serve you or we're serving you from hero to zero. We have begged, we are begging, and because we're not putting in place the right mechanisms, we likely will continue to beg. The question is, why? Louis Farrakhan said something once. He says, we Africans present ourselves as international beggars, yet we have everything we need right under our feet. International beggars, we are renowned for begging. Yet we have all the resources here. But before I get into some other details, no, it's not a sports show. But this morning, I just wanted to take a swipe at this before I get into some other pertinent uh, matters. So you look at the first slide, Ghana Premier League, five-year winning trend. 2018-2019, truncated. 2019-2020, no Premier League. In the following year, Heart of Oak won it, their prize money, 250,000 Ghana CDs. Asante Kotoko won it the following year, same amount. Then, 2022, 2023, 26,629 Ghana CDs, the equivalent of 300,000 CDs. Let's go to the next slide. But I just want us to do a bit of a breakdown. I mean, sometimes we wonder why our sports isn't progressing as we want it, that the talent doesn't really want to stay here once they get the opportunity to up and leave, like we see in Egypt, where they have a solid homegrown foundation when it comes to football, which also explains why we are not winning trophies. Ghana Premier League, Mediama wins. Look at the prize analysis. <clears throat> the total Mediama squad is 35 players, according to the GFA. If you look at the amount per player, it means if we split it, they're going to get 8,571 CDs and 40 pesos for an entire season. 
Kato Kreku, how can we continue like this? And expect our football, local soccer, to develop. How? How can we? Now let's look at comparatively. Let's go to the next slide. <clears throat> if you think I'm being, yeah, here it is. Ghana, 300,000 cities, the equivalent of 26.6K dollars. Nigeria, 100 million naira, the equivalent of 215,000 and some eight dollars, 800 dollars, eight times higher than what we are giving. Cameroon, 100 million FCFA, the equivalent of about 163.4K dollars, six times higher. Are you saying these countries are so much better than we are in terms of resources? Nigeria, you can give them some, yeah, big brother Nigeria. But Cameroon, I mean, are you saying we can't do this? We talk about we want to win trophies and we want to boost our sports and da 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 When you're doing this, you, you will go nowhere. You will not go anywhere. I just had to say it this morning. How can we do this? And that trophy, Kato Kroko, respectfully, that, that Premier League trophy, you, you know what it is. <laughs> and then the, the medals you give them, uh, I don't know, but even if, when we're doing them locally, I think we can do better. But let's move away from sports and get into our next slide. More other pertinent matters. I shouldn't say more. Other pertinent matters. Ghana is on the World Health Organization's list of 55 vulnerable countries, which have low numbers of nurses per head of population. The list, dubbed by some as the Red List, is designed to discourage systematic recruitment in these countries. The UK government recently gave £15 million, the equivalent of $18.6 million to Ghana, Nigeria and Kenya, to help boost their healthcare workforces. But let's look at the reality, the picture. Just last year, do you know how many people, these nurses, left our shores? Within this year, do you know how many have left? Within the first quarter of last year, 3,000 left. Another 1,200 have left. Look at Gifty Ai. She's at Greater Accra Regional Hospital, a.k.a. the Rich Hospital. She says, my intensive care unit alone lost 20 nurses to the UK and the US in the last six months with grave implications. Care is affected as we are not able to take any more patients. There are delays and it costs more in mortality. In other words, patients die. It could be you. It could be me. There was a day at dawn. I had COVID-19 at the time. I went round hospitals in this country because my breathing was labored and all of that. I needed oxygen. I needed a few things. God came through for me that day because I went to 37, no show. Rich hospital, no show. I should have, maybe I should have just gone to some private entity. If I tell you the story, I put it on social media at that time. And sometimes it's through no fault of theirs. The logistics are simply not... In terms of nurses leaving the country in droves, Ghana is among 55 countries in the world, like I've stated, facing a serious shortage of health workers. The UK red-listed Ghana for health workers recruitment in April 2023. In 2022, more than 1,200 Ghanaian nurses joined the UK's nursing register. Do you know what that is doing to us? The next time you go to hospital, the doctor may not be around. We have a paucity of them. We're not meeting the UN standards. The nurses we've done much better with. But with the way they are going, now they are red listing these countries, but still, individually, they are sitting exams and going, as I speak to you. I have colleagues who told me, and I encourage them, oh, you know, let's do it for Ghana. They said, hey, for where? They are gone. Some of them are in the UK. Some of them are in the US. Some of them are in Australia. Personal friends, I'm telling you. If we don't do something about it, someday we'll have to pay extra, extra, extra just to get health care, or you will not even, accessing it will be a problem. Let's look at that. Well, let's move on now. According to the World Bank, some of the country's PPAs, and I, I just want to switch from health to the power sector because it's become uh, a paramount issue recently. With independent power producers signed under the Mahama administration were too expensive and wrong. The World Bank expressed its concerns. They said they, they needed to be reviewed urgently and this came after the Mohammed-led National Democratic Congress administration signed take-or-pay contracts that had compelled Ghana to pay 12 billion Ghana cities for power that was not consumed. The finance minister then, I mean, at the time said, 
Keno Foriata managed to be resourceful from 2017 to 2021 to meet Ghana's financial commitments to the IPPs, ensuring continued power supply without the doomso experience in the Mahama administration. However, the PPA appears to be now biting the country's economy harder. As we know, the World Bank has called for the review of some of these PPAs. But what is the reality? The power purchasing agreements or power purchase agreements the government had signed, it, he said, Pierre Frank Laporte, were expensive. He said those contracts that had been signed were just expensive and the kind of PPA signed were take or pay. You pay although you do not use it. The fact is that in the next few years, Ghana, in the last few years, Ghana entered into an agreement at the wrong rate and the wrong price. Let's go to the next slide. But the NDC reacted to Pierre Laporte saying, the PPA signed under that administration was the cheapest compared to other agreements, which is true. The Ameri deal remained the cheapest among existing thermal plants across the country. The World Bank director did not have a holistic picture of the issue. That one, I cannot say whether he didn't have a holistic uh, picture because I have my own concerns with some of what they did. But as far as some of these facts are concerned, they are correct. Take or pay contracts were inevitable, which again is a fact. We didn't have an option. It's like going to the IMF now. Our hands were tied. Like it or not, we had to go. All PPAs after 2016 had a take or pay component. And that is according to Kwabla Donko, MP for Pru East and former power minister. I have a question for the majority side in parliament. I like this kind of conversation because it gives value for money. But you say that it was cruel, Samuel Atachia. You say it was reckless and all of that. But your side then in the minority, you approved all of them. So if you say the majority then, which is the minority now, was sleeping on the job, Pacho Mesuebi said, were you also sleeping? Now also order, and I don't want Tonko. So if they were sleeping then, what were you doing? Next slide. So looking at the risk assessment matrix, the International Monetary Fund has proffered three policies, including acquisitions and mergers of banks and non-banks to mitigate the possible systematic financial instability in Ghana. I've, I've segued now to what should be my penultimate issue that I'm going to be discussing. Next slide. Now the DDEP is still biting us because we're still in the midst of the IMF. The IMF revealed the recent domestic debt exchange program in Ghana, which exchanged old sovereign bonds for new ones, had affected the health of the country's financial sector, which we are seeing. The banks have their own issues, but that is also a fact. I'm tying that into this, this final bit that I'm looking at. I beg you, Nanado Danko Kufuado, our children, the school feeding program, what they are getting is not enough. The increments we are proffering for them are not enough. I mean, look at inflation now, where it's shot up again, over 42%. How can we survive on some of the metrics? And I'll break it down for you in case they've not told you. I beg of you, reach out, school feeding. Kufour started it, it's wonderful. Let's do better. Caterers rejected the 1.2 Ghana CD increment. We're using, what, 97 pesos. I mean, in Sion Puy, I think. The increase is insufficient and unacceptable, they said. They requested a payment of three CDs, 50 pesos per child. This is even low, but at least they can make do with it. Now, the caterers have withdrawn their services and demanded that governments settle outstanding arrears. Let's go to the next slide. Look at the trajectory. School feeding program. Increment to one CD, 20 pesos per child. The current charge per head, 97 pesos. The current adjustment, one CD, 20 pesos. The new proposal, three CDs, 50 pesos. I think that is reasonable for a meal, a hot meal. But if you look at the program and the impact of food inflation, the food inflation is now 48.7%. In fact, we, we, we even have to factor in what the current, the most current one is on charge per head. But look at the description and the value lost to inflation. The 97 pesos, right? If you look at the value lost, to inflation, 47.2 pesos, which means in reality, even when you are giving them 97 pesos, what they have to deal with is a little shy of 50 pesos, 49 pesos, 49.7 pesos. 
You look at the current adjustment, one CD, 20 pesos. Even if it goes there, and you look at the value loss to inflation, 58 CDs, you just have about 60 pesos to play with. In fact, that's the amount left, 61.5 pesos. The proposed amount of three CDs, 50 pesos. One CD, 71 pesos will be lost to inflation, but at least they will have another one CD, 79 pesos, which is still above the one CD, 20 pesos that has been proposed. Mr. President, I know some people feel I lambast you too much. It is merely because these things cannot prevail. If I were in school now, benefiting from this, I would want to get a good meal. A meal that would make me cheerful to be in school, to be in class. When some of these matters come up and we share them, it's because we put ourselves in the shoes of those people, those children who are on the floor learning, who don't have a blackboard or a whiteboard and the teacher has to draw in the air. Those, those kids who drowned. There are myriad problems. We can solve them bit by bit. Let's tackle the most important ones. And let's stop the profligacy with our resources. Mr. President, I salute you, but there's a lot of work to be done in Ghana. My name is Benjamin Akaku. These are my blunt thoughts served to you hot, raw, and edited, and diluted. God bless Ghana and make her great and strong.